In today's video, we're going to be watching some TikToks that'll make you question reality. Let's get into it. Myths and legends, folklore, it's literally coming to life in front of our eyes. This is unbelievable footage coming out of Indonesia. A group of people claim to have found the mythical Manti tribe. If you don't know what the Mantis are, they're part of the Proto-Malaya tribe that initially settled in the region of Aceh, Indonesia. They're considered small people, dwarfs, tiny humanoid species that existed thousands of years ago. They're thought to be extinct. But if this is real, they found a tribe that has been hiding and has been there all this time. They were only talked about in folklore. Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think. Jadi kameramen, ini rumah yang rumah yang. Tapi tidak ada suara tong tong. Mama gimana ini bang? Jadi kameramen, ini rumah yang rumah yang. I kind of want to believe this. As far as them being, you know, a lost civilization, I would hope that they would leave them alone if that's the case. But I really don't feel like this is real. If they are truly these individuals, I guess they're basically like pygmies. Um, if these are real individuals, they are off, awfully calm to be around modern day people. So it makes me wonder if maybe this is some kind of tribal tradition with a local village or something like that. But um, yeah, I, I would like to believe that this is real. I think that would be really cool. The uh, outfits that they're wearing looks like a really long headpiece and they're really tiny. Like those look like children. So leave a comment down below on what you think. If this is real, fake, or if you know what this video is exactly. Leave a comment letting me know. I've seen this video floating on TikTok for a while, but this was a more in-depth uh, video of what it really is about. So, yeah, who knows? 70%. Ah! Ooh, sorry, I know you guys really aren't too big in Billy, so I removed him from this video. He won't be back in it in this video, but he's not gone forever, just so you know. What are we doing here? I need someone to explain this to me. Someone smarter than me. Okay. Check the distance. Blow. Okay. It's like me. You know what I mean? Yeah. See it? I see it. Now we're gonna take this thing upstairs. Now it doesn't float at the same height. I'm on the next level up. It's coming back down to that same area. And it'll stop. Look at it stop. It knows where the ground is. How? <laughs> that is my question. If I went up another flight of stairs, it would float at that same level? If I go into the basement, it's gonna float at the same level. Follow me to the basement. Oh my gosh, our kids built them. Just a dynasty down here. It's a, it's a fun fort. It is a fun fort, but watch. We let it go. Where's it gonna float at? Where's it gonna float at? Right there! It knows where the floor is! That's the weirdest thing ever! So in reality, I feel like the balloon in the basement should be floating to the ceiling. Because it's trying to get On the main level, it should be just floating mid. And when I'm upstairs, it should be on the ground. Someone explain the science. What if we were to let it go, like, down the stairs? Like this? Yeah. You just, like, poke it? That balloon is walking down the stairs like a ghost. Interesting. I'm not, like super smart or anything, this is a wild guess, but I'm willing to bet that it's just due to the density of the air in each room. It's a pretty nice looking house. He's probably got like three air conditioner units in that place or heaters. And depending on the level of them each, if they're all the same temperature, it's going to find that density balance in each room. That's just how that works, I think. But I don't know, maybe, maybe not. I have a feeling though that this guy has more money than sense. 
it was all written about. No question whatsoever. They wrote about these things happen and things turn into stone. Look at this. This guy, I, I've shown this a hundred times. Leg, that's the tendon that runs down the leg. That's the blood at the bottom of his leg. This is literally his kneecap. This is the fleshy area. It turns to stone. The fleshy part turns to stone. Blood and, and the real fluidy, wetty, wet stuff doesn't. It stays inside. And it, it will leak out eventually, just like this one is. This is as strange as it gets. And, and I am just as baffled as anybody. But look at this. What the hell is that? It's something with, like, spongy looking legs on it and a mouth. I don't have any idea what that is. And this guy is saying, what did you do to me? Look at him, look at his face. And that's what they said. And they were amazed when this stuff happened to him. Right at the very first words, he says, I intend to speak of forms changed into new entities. Now listen to this. Accompanying this theme is often violence inflicted upon a victim whose transformation becomes part of the natural landscape. <laughs> now listen to this. There's a great variety among the types of transformations that take place, from humans to trans to in innate objects like the river, constellations, turn them into animals, from forms like ants and fungi into mushrooms and humans and secondly they used to call them alchemy and alchemists it's just insane stuff i don't know how to say it it's just beyond what the normal human mind can even conceive of if there are any friends here turn your face away and he held up the gorgon's head <laughs> as he prepared to throw his deadly javelin he was frozen like a marble statue in the act empix next to him thrust his sword straight at the heart of the courageous descendant of lycanius and in thrusting his right hand stiffened without movement this way of that but nihilus who falsely claimed that he was born of the nile with its seven mouths his shield engraved with its seven streams part gold, part silver, cried, Perseus, see the sources of my people? It will be a great consolation to you to take with you in death to the silent shadows, the knowledge of having fallen to so noble a man. The last echo of his voice was cut off in mid-flight, and you might believe his mouth still wished to speak, though it was no longer <laughs> pervious to words. He turned to stone and said, ah! Eric's rebuked them, saying, Lack of courage, not the power of the Gorgon, freezes you. Rush in with me and knock this youth and his magic weapon to the ground. He had started his rush, but the floor held his feet fast, and there he stayed, unmoving stone, a fully armored statue. This is the key, a fully armored statue. They don't turn naked. Everything goes to stone. Now listen to this. Phineas is turned to stone. They all deserved the punishment they suffered except one of Perseus's warriors. While he was fighting on his side, Acontius saw the Gorgon's head and took the shape of hardened stone. Astagius struck him with his long sword, thinking he was still alive, and the blade gave a high-pitched ringing noise. <laughs> Ting! While Estagius stood there amazed, the same power transformed him, and he remained there with a wondering look on his marble face. It would take a long time to tell the names of the middle ranks of men. Two hundred bodies survived the fight. Two hundred bodies were turned to stone. This is how they turned him to stone. Now, how it happened, I don't know. I can't, I'm, for the life of me, I can't imagine looking at something and, and that could, would cause you to turn to stone. Somehow that thing is, something was coming out of it. Now, the ones, these guys that were next to the statue said they can feel a, some kind of presence. They can feel some kind of energy. 
there's a great variety among the types of transformations that take place. And this, I'm telling you, as far as I can determine, that was a living creature at one time. I've looked at it very carefully. The blood running out of his leg and all of this different discoloration, the kale and clays of the face are different than, than the rest. He's strangling a little dragon here. And they still won't consider to look at it. The, the more educated they are, the less likely it is that they can conceive of this being reality, even though the reality is smashed into their faces. I always find this stuff extremely fascinating. I love hearing about mythology and biblical lore, all of that. I love it a lot. It's really interesting to me. It's like I'm reading a good Lord of the Rings book or something like that. But um, I really like the the theories of giants and Nephilim and all of that. And they've been petrified into stone because of Gorgons and things like that. I think that's really interesting. I did have a subscriber um, leave a comment in a couple of videos past basically saying, you know, it's very well impossible that these entities were real and did also get turned into stone. But he brought up a very valid point that I'm starting to now see in these videos. For example, sometimes you'll see a video of these petrifications and it'll be like, oh, this is an elephant the size of a mountain. And it looks like a, it's a rock mountain that looks like an elephant or rocks that look like snakes, things like that. But if it was truly an elephant, Elephants do travel in herd. Why is there just that one petrified stoned elephant? Where's the rest of the elephants that were following along or just in that area in general? Or for the land masses that look like people laying down, where are the rest of the people that would have been around that person? So it, it makes me question, you know, why is it always just an individual being creature or things like that that's been petrified into stone and not like a group of 10 in that one spot that that make any sense i like the idea of this being something that did happen in the past and the evidence is right there in front of us but it's kind of hard to believe in some in some aspects leave a comment letting me know what you think hey if you haven't done so already go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel i only ask once per video and i make a video like this every day and it would be awesome to see you come back again tomorrow do you guys remember this movie the indian in the cupboard this kid puts the little indian toy in a cupboard and turns a key and the little indian comes to life you guys remember this i haven't watched this movie in years but i'm pretty sure there's like some tiktok think piece about how this movie is racist so that's not the point of this video this is so the vhs for the indian in the cupboard comes with the same toy that we see in the movie packaged with it that's pretty cool but not cooler than this the plastic casing for the vhs tape had this little keyhole on the side now i don't know if y'all remember but getting all those old school films they all came in a casing like this but this was the only one i recall that was unique like this and the actual cover art for the movie, you could take it out of the casing, flip it over, and then it would have like this wood paneling on it, just like in the movie. So not only did you get the toy, you also got the key in which you could slide in there. Just giving you a whole different kind of experience for this movie. I miss stuff like this. I know this wasn't a conspiracy or a theory or anything like that, but uh, I just wanted to add that in here because I seen this through my For You page and I actually had that very same VHS tape with the little Indian man and everything, and it really just like brought back memories. Hopefully it might have done the same to you. The idea to understand is that there is a high probability above 90% of a major contact event happening somewhere around your year of 2026 and 2027. That will change everything and the way you look at life and the way you connect to the stars. So be prepared for the idea of an upliftment of vibration a recognition of awareness and awakening to the idea that you are part of a galactic family, which is imminent, not too far away. <clears throat> I've seen this individual on my TikTok quite a bit now. I kind of like what he has to say. I think that he has a lot of interesting concepts as far as afterlife and waking up in it. 
I, I'm interested in more of his content. Let me know. I'm not, I'm honestly, I'm not sure of what his name is. Let me know in the comments if this is something that you're interested in or if this individual is someone you're interested in. I actually kind of like some of his stories, some of his theories. I think that he's very open-minded on what's out there beyond our realm. So let me know. The following video was captured by a group of tourists in India. What they record is something so far out of this world, it's crazy. What looks like a group of pieces of ruins in the water. You can tell this is not natural as these stone pieces have what seems like hieroglyphs and drawings. The question is though, what was this? Was this some sort of craft or was this some sort of structure? Take a look at this and tell me what you think. Hey, those are really cool looking structures. They looked like actual rock that had carvings in them and like they were perfectly smooth with dimples. It, I don't know what that was. What, what could have that have been? I like the idea that things like that, relics and like pyramids, things like that. I just like the idea that those are fast charging spots for like UFOs. They just go there, park on them because they're perfectly slotted to fit up inside of a machine or something like that and it just charges it. I think that's an awesome thing to think about and I often wonder if that's what they use pyramids for is like maybe they can just sit their whole ship on the pyramid and it charges it. I think that would be neat. But uh, I have no clue what those are. I think they're real. I don't think that they're a movie prop or anything like that. They look like hard material some of them even have carvings of what look to be like goats in them but they are perfectly smooth and they have like this this point on them that's it's too perfect to not be natural so i i'm sure this is something of significance to like a tribe or a village nearby but i would like to know a little bit more about this so if you have any information please let me know why isn't the book of enoch in the bible if enoch is mentioned in the bible Enoch is mentioned in the Bible as a marker, uh, an Old Testament marker, if you will. But the book of Enoch, if you've read it, uh, is not uh, scripture. It is history. Uh, and it's a very, very dark history uh, of something that happened uh, before the great flood. It is mentioned by Jude, who uh, in Jude 6 says, and the angels which kept not their first estate, uh, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Those angels are out of business. Their story can be accessed, but the spiritual uh, gain, that is, a spiritual lesson as gained uh, from studying uh, the fallen angels uh, is probably best left to the scholars or to someone who has exceptional interests in the old world. Well, let me tell you, I have exceptional interest in the old world. I'm thinking about reading the Book of Enoch. I would like to maybe get a better understanding of what's all it about because I've honestly, I'm not 100% sure. I've seen it mentioned so many times in TikTok and it always references basically just the Anunnaki and the Nephilim. And that's really all I pick up from it. I never pick up the true whole reason why they were here and what happened, the stories between the Anunnaki and the Nephilim and the, all the people. I really, I just don't know. But I am thinking about maybe watching like a, a TikTok series on learning about the book of Enoch and the stories that happen in it. I have very little knowledge about it and you might enjoy watching me learn some things or uh, learn a thing or two about it because I'm I'm think I'm pretty interested in it.
saying, I really wanted to see more of that. I've looked on TikTok for more information about this video because truthfully, I have not a single clue as to what that could have been. That genuinely did look like a triangle-shaped UFO. It definitely was a UFO. It wasn't something that I could identify. But um, that was really good. That was a really good video. The stabilization of it made it easier to see the device, but it also made the device appear as if it wasn't moving. And that kind of made it seem like it was fake. But I don't know. That was really good. I'm, I'm kind of flabbergasted. <laughs> There's some nightmare fuel for you if you were interested. These always come up in my For You page, so I thought I'd add it for a little bit of flavor to the channel, because why not? All right, guys, I'm going to end the video here. And with that being said, have a good day.